Yeah, Tisha, and we just saw a car drive by here going way too fast. The speed limit in this area is around 25 miles per hour. Now, in this neighborhood, you'll see children walking and running through here, but neighbors say that it is just way too dangerous. They are afraid someone will get killed. Frances Adigwe is not a fan of traffic in her Raleigh neighborhood, especially Noosewood Drive. It's scary. She gets up tight just walking to the mailbox. I have to come like this to pick up the mail. I don't have to, like, you know, come this way. Yeah. Because I, I, I'm, I'm really scared and always like, apprehensive. You see what I'm saying? She blames drivers' impatience going faster than this speed limit. Noosewood Drive connects with Wildwood Forest Drive just off Capitol Boulevard, a busy intersection with an elementary school nearby. Parents tell us a second school crossing guard is needed in this area because drivers ignore the crosswalk. And their kids, the kids just run across the street. They don't look. I don't trust my son to walk by himself, especially with cars, and I'm, I'm just afraid he's going to get hit. Whoever is in charge has to be reached. Because it's really, we don't allow the kids to play outside. Neighbors can share their concerns with the city using this application. The form is part of the city's neighborhood traffic calming program a project that helps them monitor and manage traffic volumes and speeds. Here is a list of minor and major traffic calming projects on the city of Raleigh's website. The list, however, was last updated in 2014. Even so, Noosewood Drive is not listed. And even though the list has not been updated in a while, the city still wants you to go to the website and fill out the application to express your concerns about traffic in your area. We've made it easy for you. We have a link on our website, abc11.com, of this city website, and just look for the, home, the, the story on the homepage. We are live in Raleigh. Tim Pulliam, ABC 11 Eyewitness News. Okay, and this color is really pretty. With the personal and shopper, Nick Allen is confident he's okay. going to score just the right gift for his wife. His secret? The Dress for Success boutique sale. I consider myself a, a, a great gift giver, and one of my secrets is definitely the Dress for Success um, sale. And, and so right before, you know, holidays or Valentine's Day coming up, um, I, I went to my go-to move and decided to come in and shop around for a gift for my wife. The shop is set up at Northgate Mall in Durham to benefit the nonprofit. And as for the deals? Wonderful items they are. 20% of retail on most items. We have a lot of new items. We have gently used. We have a beautiful designer section. We have shoes. We have handbags. We have extraordinary clothes, and they're great deals. So this boutique actually only opens a couple of times a year, and this weekend it's just a one-day event for the public. We'll be open three times a year this year in Durham here at Northgate. The boutique opens to the public from 10 to 5 Saturday, and a $20 contribution gets you in to shop early at 9. She could wear this several different places as well. All the revenue from the sale goes back into Dress for Success of the Triangle, which helps women find meaningful employment and economic security. But this week, Weekend, it's also helping shoppers like Nick Allen to find a sweet deal. Well, you know, they make it really easy. In Durham, Amber Repenta, ABC 11 Eyewitness News. I just heard several very loud shots. It, it sounded like a very large gun, like a, a rifle or something. That gunfire that echoed through Collington Drive's typically quiet tree lined parking lot left a woman dead near her car outside the town home where Cary police say she had been staying temporarily. When she arrived around 7 tonight, police say she was met by a man she knew who had a gun shooting and killing her several rounds striking nearby homes. It sounded my first inclination was gunfire, but then it sounded too tinny met metallic. Mm -hmm but it was about a dozen shots, 10 to 12 shots. Loud, and I called my neighbor and said, did you hear that? And he said, yes, I heard it. I, I don't know what it was. Minutes after the shooting on Collington, a man approaches a Cary police officer not far away at Cary Town Center Mall. The man is now being questioned as a person of interest in the woman's death. He came over and turned himself into one of our officers. He just said that uh, he thought that we might want to speak to him, and that's all he information he gave us. Back on Collington Drive with police not releasing any names, shaken neighbors left to worry and wonder. Which one of my neighbors? What happened? Was it criminal? Was it domestic? I don't know. You know, it was the fear of what happened to one of my neighbors. 
Joel, yes. Harris Teeter and first responders gave away more than 650 gallons of free water in less than an hour, and none of that water is here. You will have to go to some other distribution sites tomorrow morning at 10 a.m., and I tweeted those details at Tim ABC 11 if you're interested. But if you need water tonight, Harris Teeter is giving away free water. Um, well, they're selling uh, cases of water. Now, let's get to Franklin Street. That's usually a popular destination on a Friday night. Tonight, it's a ghost town. It's the weekend in Chapel Hill, but it looks more like a Monday. Franklin Street bars and restaurants are dead. The entire town's water off limits due to a water main break and low supply. Restaurants forced to close. On a Friday, it's crazy, and we're open 24 hours a day. Um, and what do we do with all this food? Throw in the garbage? Um, it's just not fair. I guess we'll go find a chain, um, a lock and chain. We don't have a key. Our cameras captured health inspectors at Linda's Bar delivering the bad news. It's a huge bummer, honestly. It could be close to $20,000 that we're, we're losing. Local schools and UNC's campus shut down early. School leaders telling students to leave campus. Those who can't, dining halls will be open under modified times, providing bottled water, portable toilets installed around campus. We're already calling it Water Crisis 2017. So. <laughs> it was really unexpected and it um, came out of nowhere and we're, we're all running to CVS right now before it closes to get some water bottles, get some DiGiorno pizza and uh, it'll, be, um, it'll be an interesting weekend. We ran into Australia exchange students who braved their first winter storm and now a water shortage. It's been an interesting introduction to Chapel Hill. We've basically been contacting everybody. We're going to scrounge food. As, as much food together as we have. All our water together. Yeah, Skittles, yeah. oatmeal, ready-made oatmeal. We're just going to put it all together and try our luck. And it's business as usual at UNC Hospital. They are conserving water and using bottled water. Steve, Tisha.